were like the great deep unto him. But, because thy spirit was born above the waters, thy mercy forsook not our misery, and thou saidst, Let there be light, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, let there be light. And because our soul was troubled within us, we remembered thee, O Lord, from the land of Jordan. And that mountain equal unto thyself, but little for our sakes, and our darkness displeased us, we turned unto thee and there was light. And behold, we were sometimes darkness, but now light in the Lord. But as yet by faith and not by sight, for by hope we are saved, but hope that is seen, is not hope. As yet doth deep call unto deep, but now in the voice of thy water spouts. As yet doth he that saith, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even he as yet, doth not think himself to have apprehended, and forgetteth those things which are behind, and reacheth forth to those which are before, and groaneth being bird hent, and his soul thirsteth after the living God, as the heart after the water brooks, and saith, When shall I come? Desiring to be clothed upon with his house which is from heaven, and calleth upon this lower deep, saying, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, be not children in understanding, but in malice, be ye children, that in understanding ye may be perfect, and O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, but now no longer in his own voice, but in thine who sentest thy spirit from above, through him who ascended up on high, and set open the floodgates of his gifts, that the force of his streams might make glad the city of God. Him doth this friend of the bridegroom sigh after, having now the first fruits of the Spirit, laid up with him, yet still groaning within himself, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of his body, to him he sighs, a member of the bride, for him he is jealous, as being a friend of the bridegroom, for him he is jealous, not for himself, because in the voice of thy water spouts, not in his own voice, doth he call to that other depth, over whom being jealous he feareth, lest as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so their minds should be corrupted from the purity that is in our bridegroom thy only son. Oh what a light of beauty will that be, when we shall see him as he is, and those tears be passed away, which have been my meat day and night, whilst they daily say unto me, Where is now thy God? Behold, I too say, O my God, where art thou? See, where thou art. In thee. I breathe a little, when I pour out my soul by myself in the voice of joy. And praise, the sound of him that keeps holy day. And yet again it is sad. Because it relapseth, and becomes a deep, or rather perceives itself still. To be a deep. Unto it speaks my faith which thou hast kindled to enlighten. My feet in the night, why art thou sad, O my soul, and why dost thou trouble me? Hope in the Lord, his word is a lantern unto thy feet, hope. And endure, until the night, the mother of the wicked, until the wrath of the Lord, be overpassed, whereof we also were once children, who were sometimes darkness, relics whereof we bear about us in our body, dead because of sin, until the day break, and the shadows fly away. Hope thou in the Lord, in the morning I shall stand in thy presence, and contemplate thee, I shall forever confess unto thee. In the morning I shall stand in thy presence, and shall see the health of my countenance, my God, who also shall quicken our mortal bodies, by the Spirit that dwelleth in us because he hath in mercy been born over our inner darksome and floating deep, from whom we have in this pilgrimage received an earnest, that we should now be light, whilst we are saved by hope, 
and are the children of light, and the children of the day, not the children of the night, nor of the darkness, which yet sometimes we were, betwixt whom and us, in this uncertainty of human knowledge, thou only dividest, thou, who provest our hearts, and callest the light, day, and the darkness, night. For who discerneth us, but thou? And what have we, that we have not received of thee? Out of the same lump vessels are made unto honor, whereof others also are made unto disianure. Or who, except thou, our God, made for us that firmament of authority over us in thy divine scripture? As it is said, for heaven shall be folded up like a scroll, and now is it stretched over us like a skin. For thy divine scripture is of more eminent authority, since those mortals by whom thou dispensest it unto us, underwent mortality. And thou knowest, Lord, thou knowest, how thou with skins didst clothe men, when they by sin became mortal. Whence thou hast like a skin stretched out the firmament of thy book, that is, thy harmonizing words, which by the ministry of mortal men thou spreadest over us. For by their very death was that solid firmament of authority, in thy discourses set forth by them, more eminently extended over all that be under it, which whilst they lived here, was not so eminently extended. Thou hadst not as yet spread abroad the heaven like a skin, thou hadst not as yet enlarged in all directions the glory of their deaths. Let us look, O Lord, upon the heavens, the work of thy fingers, clear from our eyes that cloud, which thou hast spread under them. There is thy testimony, which giveth wisdom unto the little ones, perfect, O my God. Thy praise out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. For we know no other books, which so destroy pride, which so destroy the enemy and the defender, who resisteth thy reconciliation by defending his own sins. I know not, Lord, I know not any other such pure words, which so persuade me to confess, and make my neck pliant to thy yoke, and invite me to serve thee for naught. Let me understand them, good Father, grant this to me, who am placed under them, because for those placed under them, hast thou established them. Other waters there be above this firmament, I believe immortal, and separated from earthly corruption. Let them praise thy name, let them praise thee, the super celestial people, thine angels, who have no need to gaze up at this firmament, or by reading to know of thy word. For they always behold thy face, and there read without any syllables in time, what will it thy eternal will? they read, they choose, they love. They are ever reading, and that never passes away which they read, for by choosing, and by loving, they read the very unchangeableness of thy counsel. Their book is never closed, nor their scroll folded up, seeing thou thyself art this to them, and art eternally, because thou hast ordained them above this firmament, which thou hast firmly settled over the infirmity of the lower people, where they might gaze up and learn thy mercy, announcing in time. Thee who madest times. For thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy truth reach it unto the clouds. The clouds pass away, but the heaven abideth. The preachers of thy word pass out of this life into another, but Thy scripture is spread abroad over the people, even unto the end of the world. Yet heaven and earth also shall pass away, but thy words shall not pass away. Because the scroll shall be rolled together, and the grass over which it was spread, shall with the goodliness of it pass away, but thy word remaineth forever, which now appeareth unto us under the dark image of the clouds, and through the glass of the heavens, not as it is, because we also, though the well-beloved of thy Son, 
yet it hath not yet appeared. What we shall be. He looked through the lattice of our flesh, and he spake us tenderly, and kindled us, and we ran after his odors. But when he shall appear, then shall we be like him, for we shall see him as he is. As he is, Lord, will our sight be. For altogether, as thou art, thou only knowest, who art unchangeably, and knowest unchangeably, and willest unchangeably. And thy essence knoweth, and willeth unchangeably, and thy knowledge is, and willeth unchangeably. And thy will is, and knoweth unchangeably. Nor see method right in thine eyes, that as the unchangeable light knoweth itself, so should it be known by the thing enlightened, and changeable. Therefore is my soul like a land, where no water is, because as it cannot of itself enlighten itself, so can it not of itself satisfy itself. For so is the fountain of life with thee. Like as in thy light we shall see light. Who gathered the embittered together into one society? For they have all. One end, a temporal and earthly felicity, for attaining whereof they do. All things, though they waver up and down with an innumerable variety of cares. Who, Lord, but thou, saidst, let the waters be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, which thirsteth after thee. For the sea also is thine, and thou hast made it, and thy hands prepared the dry land. Nor is the bitterness of men's wills, but the gathering together of the waters, called sea, for thou restrainest the wicked desires of men's souls, and settest them their bounds, how far they may be allowed to pass, that their waves may break one against another, and thus makest thou it a sea, by the order of thy dominion over all things. But the souls that thirst after thee, and that appear before thee, being by other bounds divided from the society of the sea, thou waterest by a sweet spring, that the earth may bring forth her fruit, and thou, Lord God, so commanding, our soul may bud forth works of mercy according to their kind, loving our neighbor in the relief of his bodily necessities. Having seed in itself according to its likeness, when from feeling of our infirmity, we compassionate so as to relieve the needy, helping them, as we would be helped, if we were in like need, not only in things easy, as in herb yielding seed, but also in the protection of our assistance, with our best strength, like the tree yielding fruit, that is, well doing in rescuing him that suffers wrong, from the hand of the powerful, and giving him the shelter of protection, by the mighty strength of just judgment. So, Lord, so, I beseech thee, let there spring up, as thou doest, as thou givest cheerfulness and ability, let truth spring out of the earth, and Righteousness look down from heaven, and let there be lights in the firmament. Let us break our bread to the hungry, and bring the houseless poor to our house. Let us clothe the naked, and despise not those of our own flesh. Which fruits having sprung out of the earth, see it is good. And let our temporary light break forth, and ourselves, from this lower fruitfulness of action, arriving at the delightfulness of contemplation. Obtaining the word of life above, appear like lights in the world. Cleaving to the firmament of thy scripture. For there thou instructest us. To divide between the things intellectual, and things of sense, as betwixt. The day and the night, or between souls, given either to things. Intellectual, or things of sense, so that now not thou only in the secret. Of thy judgment, as before the firmament was made, dividest between the light and the darkness, but thy spiritual children also set and ranked in the same firmament, now that thy grace is laid open throughout the world, may give light upon the earth, and divide betwixt the day and the night, and be for signs of times, that old things are passed away, and, behold, all things are become new, 
and that our salvation is nearer than when we believed, and that the night is far spent, and the day is at hand, and that thou wilt crown thy year with blessing, sending the laborers of thy goodness into thy harvest, in sowing whereof, others have labored. Sending also into another field, whose harvest shall be in the end. Thus, grantest thou the prayers of him that asketh, and blessest the years of the just, but thou art the same, and in thy years which fail not, thou preparest a garner for our passing years. For thou by an eternal counsel dost in their proper seasons bestow heavenly blessings upon the earth. 4. To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, as it were the lesser light, to another faith, to another the gift with the light of perspicuous truth, as it were for the rule of the day, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, as it were the lesser light, to another faith, to another the gift of healing, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, and all these as it were stars. For all these worketh the one and self same spirit, dividing to every man his own as he will, and causing stars to appear manifestly, to profit with all. But the word of knowledge, wherein are contained all sacraments, which are varied in their seasons as it were the moon, and those other notices of gifts, which are reckoned up in order, as it were stars, inasmuch as they come short of that brightness of wisdom, which gladdens the forementioned day, are only for the rule of the night. For they are necessary to such, as that thy most prudent servant could not speak unto as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even he, who speaketh wisdom among those that are perfect. But the natural man, as it were a babe in Christ and fed on milk, until he be strengthened for solid meat and his eye be enabled to behold the sun, let him not dwell in a night forsaken of all light, but be content with the light of the moon and the stars. So dost thou speak to us, our all-wise God, in thy book, thy firmament, that we may discern all things, in an admirable contemplation, though as yet in signs and in times, and in days, and in years. But first, wash you, be clean, put away evil from your souls, and from before mine eyes, that the dry land may appear. Learn to do good, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow, that the earth may bring forth the green herb for meat, and the tree bearing fruit, and come, let us reason. Together, saith the Lord, that there may be lights in the firmament of the heaven, and they may shine upon the earth. That rich man asked of the good master, what he should do to attain eternal life. Let the good master tell him, whom he thought no more than man, but he is good because he is God. Let him tell him, if he would enter into life, he must keep the commandments, let him put away from him the bitterness of malice and wickedness, not kill, not commit adultery, not steal, not bear false witness, that the dry land may appear, and bring forth the honoring of father and mother, and the love of our neighbor. All these, saith he, have I kept. Whence then so many thorns, if the earth be fruitful? Go. Root up the spreading thickets of covetousness, sell that thou hast, and be filled with fruit, by giving to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and follow the Lord if thou wilt be perfect, associated with them, among whom he speaketh wisdom, who know it what to distribute to the day, and to the night, that thou also mayest know it, and for thee there may be lights in the firmament of heaven, which will not be, unless thy heart be there, nor will that either be, unless there thy treasure be, as thou hast heard of the good master. But that barren earth was grieved, and the thorns choked the word. But you, 
chosen generation, you weak things of the world, who have forsaken all, that ye may follow the Lord, go after him, and confound the mighty, go after him, ye beautiful feet, and shine ye in the firmament, that the heavens may declare his glory, dividing between the light of the perfect, though not as the angels, and the darkness of the little ones, though not despised. Shine over the earth, and let the day, lightened by the sun, utter unto day, speech of wisdom, and night, shining with the moon, show unto night, the word of knowledge. The moon and stars shine for the night, yet doth not the night obscure them, seeing they give it light in its degree. For behold God saying, as it were, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, there came suddenly a sound from heaven, as it had been the rushing of a mighty wind, and there appeared cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And there were made lights in the firmament of heaven, having the word of life. Run ye to and fro, everywhere, ye holy fires, ye beauteous fires, for ye are the light of the world, nor are ye put under a bushel, he whom you cleave unto, is exalted, and hath exalted you. Run ye to and fro, and be known unto all nations. Let the sea also conceive and bring forth your works, and let the waters bring forth the moving creature that hath life. For ye, separating the precious from the vile, are made the mouth of God, by whom he saith, Let the waters bring forth, not the living creature which the earth brings forth, but the moving creature having life, and the fowls that fly above the earth. For thy sacraments, O God, by the ministry of thy holy ones, have moved amid the waves of temptations of the world, to hallow the Gentiles in thy name, in thy baptism. And amid these things, many great wonders were wrought, as it were great whales, and the voices of thy messengers flying above the earth, in the open firmament of thy book, that being set over them, as their authority under which they were to fly, whithersoever they went. For there is no speech nor language, where their voice is not heard, seeing their sound is gone through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world, because thou, Lord, multipliedst them. By blessing. Speak I untruly, or do I mingle and confound, and not distinguish between the lucid knowledge of these things in the firmament of heaven, and the material works in the wavy sea, and under the firmament of heaven? For of those things whereof the knowledge is substantial and defined, without any increase by generation, as it were lights of wisdom and knowledge, yet even of them, the material operations are many and diverse, and one thing growing out of another, they are multiplied by thy blessing, O God, who hast refreshed the fastidiousness of mortal senses, that so one thing in the understanding of our mind, may, by the motions of the body, be many ways set out, and expressed. These sacraments have the waters brought forth, but in thy word the necessities of the people estranged from the eternity of thy truth, have brought them forth, but in thy gospel, because the waters themselves cast them forth, the diseased bitterness whereof was the cause, why they were sent forth in thy word. Now are all things fair that thou hast made, but behold, thyself art unutterably fairer, that madest all, from whom had not Adam fallen, the brackishness of the sea had never flowed out of him, that is, the human race so profoundly curious, and tempestuously swelling, and restlessly tumbling up and down, and then had there been no need of thy dispensers to work in many waters, after a corporeal and sensible manner, mysterious doings and sayings. For such those moving and flying creatures now seem to me to mean, whereby people being initiated and consecrated by corporeal sacraments, 
should not further profit, unless their soul had a spiritual life, and unless after the word of admission, it looked forwards to perfection. And hereby, in thy word, not the deepness of the sea, but the earth, separated from the bitterness of the waters, brings forth, not the moving creature that hath life, but the living soul. For now hath it no more need of baptism, as the heathen have, and as itself had, when it was covered with the waters, for no other entrance is there into the kingdom of heaven, since thou hast appointed that this should be the entrance nor does it seek after wonderfulness of miracles to work belief, for it is not such, that unless it sees signs and wonders, it will not believe, now that the faithful earth is separated from the waters that were bitter with infidelity, and tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Neither then does that earth which thou hast founded upon the waters, need that flying kind, which at thy word the waters brought forth. Send thou thy word into it by thy messengers, for we speak of their working, yet it is thou that workest in them that they may work out a living soul in it. The earth brings it forth, because the earth is the cause that they work this in the soul, as the sea was the cause that they wrought upon the moving creatures that have life, and the fowls that fly under the firmament of heaven, of whom the earth hath no need. Although it feeds upon that fish which was taken out of the deep, upon that table which thou hast prepared in the presence of them that believe. For therefore was he taken out of the deep, that he might feed the dry land, and the fowl, though bred in the sea, is yet multiplied upon the earth. For of the first preachings of the evangelists, man's infidelity was the cause, yet are the faithful also exhorted and blessed by them manifoldly, from day to day. But the living soul takes his beginning from the earth, for it profits only those already among the faithful, to contain themselves from the love of this world, that so their soul may live unto thee, which was dead while it lived in pleasures, in death bringing pleasures, Lord, for thou, Lord, art the life-giving delight of the pure heart. Now then let thy ministers work upon the earth not as upon the waters of infidelity, by preaching and speaking by miracles, and sacraments, and mystic words, wherein ignorance, the mother of admiration, might be intent upon them, out of a reverence towards those secret signs. For such is the entrance unto the faith for the sons of Adam forgetful of thee, while they hide themselves from thy face, and become a darksome deep. But let thy ministers work now as on the dry land, separated from the whirlpools of the great deep, and let them be a pattern unto the faithful, by living before them, and stirring them up to imitation. 4. Thus do men hear, so as not to hear only, but to do also. Seek the Lord. And your soul shall live, that the earth may bring forth the living soul. Be not conformed to the world. Contain yourselves from it, the soul lives. By avoiding what it dies by affecting. Contain yourselves from the ungoverned wildness of pride, the sluggish voluptuousness of luxury, and the false name of knowledge, that so the wild beasts may be tamed, the cattle broken to the yoke, the serpents, harmless. For these be the motions of our mind under an allegory, that is to say, the haughtiness of pride, the delight of lust, and the poison of curiosity, are the motions of a dead soul, for the soul dies not so as to lose all motion, because it dies by forsaking the fountain of life, and so is taken up by this transitory world, and is conformed unto it. But thy word, O God, is the fountain of life eternal, and passeth not away, wherefore this departure of the soul is restrained by thy word, when it is said unto us, Be not conformed unto this world, that so the earth may in the fountain of life bring forth a living soul, that is, 
a soul. Made continent in thy word, by thy evangelists, by following the followers of thy Christ. For this is after his kind, because a man is wont to imitate his friend. Be yet, saith he, as I am, for I also am as you are. Thus in this living soul shall there be good beasts, in meekness of action. For thou hast commanded, Go on with thy business in meekness, so shalt thou be beloved by all men, and good cattle, which neither if they eat shall they overabound, nor, if they eat not, have any lack, and good serpents, not dangerous, to do hurt, but wise to take heed, and only making so much search into this temporal nature, as may suffice that eternity be clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. For these creatures are obedient unto reason, when being restrained from deadly prevailing upon us, they live, and are good. For behold, O Lord, our God, our Creator, when our affections have been restrained from the love of the world, by which we died through evil living, and begun to be a living soul, through good living, and thy word which thou spokest by thy apostle, is made good in us, be not conformed to this world, there follows that also, which thou presently subjoinst, saying, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not now after your kind, as though following your neighbor who went before you, nor as living after the example of some better man, for thou saidst not, let man be made after his kind, but, let us make man after our own image and similitude, that we might prove what thy will is. For, to this purpose said that dispenser of thine, who begot children by the gospel, that he might not forever have them babes, whom he must be fain to feed with milk, and cherish as a nurse, be ye transformed, saith he, by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Wherefore thou sayest not, let man be made, but let us make man. Nor saidst thou, according to his kind, but after our image and likeness. For man being renewed in his mind, and beholding and understanding thy truth, needs not man as his director, so as to follow after his kind, but by thy direction proveth what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of thine, yea, thou teachest him. Now made capable, to discern the trinity of the unity, and the unity of the trinity. Wherefore to that said in the plural, let us make man, is yet subjoined in the singular, and God made man, and to that said in the plural, after our likeness, is subjoined in the singular, after the image of God. Thus is man renewed in the knowledge of God, after the image of him that created him, and being made spiritual, he judgeth all things, all things which are to be judged, yet himself is judged of no man. But that he judgeth all things, this answers to his having dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over all cattle, and wild beasts, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For this he doth by the understanding of his mind, whereby he perceiveth the things of the Spirit of God, whereas otherwise, man being placed in honor, had no understanding, and is compared unto the brute beasts, and is become like unto them. In thy church therefore, O our God, according to thy grace which thou hast bestowed upon it, for we are thy workmanship created unto good works, not those only who are spiritually set over, but they also who spiritually are subject to those that are set over them for in this way didst thou make man male and female, in thy grace spiritual, where, according to the sex of body, there is neither male nor female, because neither Jew nor Grecian, neither bond nor free spiritual persons, whether such as are set over, or such as obey, 
do judge spiritually, not of that spiritual knowledge which shines in the firmament, for they ought not to judge as to so supreme authority, nor may they judge of thy book itself. Even though something there shineth not clearly, for we submit our understanding unto it, and hold for certain, that even what is closed to our sight, is yet rightly and truly spoken. For so man, though now spiritual and renewed in the knowledge of God after his image that created him, ought to be a doer of the law, not a judge. Neither doth he judge of that distinction of spiritual and carnal men, who are known unto thine eyes, O our God, and have not as yet discovered themselves unto us by works, that by their fruits we might know them, but thou, Lord, dost even now know them, and hast divided and called them in secret, or ever the firmament was made. Nor doth he, though spiritual, judge the unquiet people of this world, for what hath he to do, to judge them that are without, knowing not which of them shall hereafter come into the sweetness of thy grace, and which continue in the perpetual bitterness of ungodliness. Man therefore, whom thou hast made after thine own image, received not dominion over the lights of heaven, nor over that hidden heaven itself, nor over the day and the night, which thou calledst before the foundation of the heaven, nor over the gathering together of the waters, which is the sea, but he received dominion over the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the air, and over all cattle, and over all the earth, and over all creeping things which creep upon the earth. For he judgeth and approveth what he findeth right, and he disalloweth what he findeth amiss, whether in the celebration of those sacraments by which such are initiated, as thy mercy searches out in many waters, or in that, in which that fish is set. Fourth, which, taken out of the deep, the devout earth feedeth upon, or in the expressions and signs of words, subject to the authority of thy book such signs, as proceed out of the mouth, and sound forth, flying as it were, under the firmament, by interpreting, expounding, discoursing disputing, consecrating, or praying unto thee, so that the people may answer, Amen. The vocal pronouncing of all which words, is occasioned by the deep of this world, and the blindness of the flesh, which cannot see thoughts, so that there is need to speak aloud into the ears, so that, although flying fowls be multiplied upon the earth, yet they derive their beginning from the waters. The spiritual man judgeth also by allowing of what is right, and disallowing what he finds amiss, in the works and lives of the faithful, their alms, as it were the earth bringing forth fruit, and of the living soul, living by the taming of the affections, in chastity, in fasting, in holy meditations, and of those things, which are perceived by the senses of the body. Upon all these is he now said to judge, wherein he hath also power of correction. But what is this, and what kind of mystery? Behold, thou blessest mankind. O Lord, that they may increase and multiply, and replenish the earth, dust. Thou not thereby give us a hint to understand something? Why didst thou not as well bless the light, which thou calledst day, nor the firmament of heaven, nor the lights, nor the stars, nor the earth, nor the sea? I might say that thou, O God, who created us after thine image, I might say, that it had been thy good pleasure to bestow this blessing peculiarly upon man, hadst thou not in like manner blessed the fishes and the whales, that they should increase and multiply, and replenish the waters of the sea, and that the fowls should be multiplied upon the earth. I might say, likewise, that this blessing pertained properly unto such creatures, as are bred of their own kind, had I found it given to the fruit trees, and plants, and beasts of the earth. But now neither unto the herbs, 
nor the trees, nor the beasts, nor serpents is it said, increase and multiply. Notwithstanding all these as well as the fishes, fowls, or men, do by generation increase and continue their kind. What then shall I say, O truth my light? That it was idly said, and without meaning. Not so, O father of piety, far be it from a minister of thy word to say so. And if I understand not what thou meanest by that phrase, let my betters, that is, those of more understanding than myself, make better use of it, according as thou, my God, hast given to each man to understand. But let my confession also be pleasing in thine eyes. Wherein I confess unto thee, that I believe, O Lord, that thou spokest not so in vain, nor will I suppress, what this lesson suggests to me. For it is true, nor do I see what should hinder me from thus understanding the figurative sayings of thy Bible. For I know a thing to be manifoldly signified by corporeal expressions, which is understood one way by the mind, and that understood many ways in the mind, which is signified one way by corporeal expression. Behold, the single love of God and our neighbor, by what manifold sacraments, and innumerable languages, and in each several language, in how innumerable modes of speaking, it is corporeally expressed. Thus do the offspring of the waters increase and multiply. Observe again, whosoever readest this, behold, what scripture delivers, and the voice pronounces one only way, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, is it not understood manifoldly, not through any deceit of error, but by various kinds of true senses? Thus do man's offspring increase and multiply. If therefore we conceive of the natures of the things themselves, not allegorically, but properly, then does the phrase increase and multiply agree unto all things, that come of seed. But if we treat of the words as figuratively spoken, which I rather suppose to be the purpose of the scripture, which doth not, surely, superfluously ascribe this benediction to the offspring of aquatic animals and man only, then do we find multitude to belong to creatures spiritual as well as corporeal, as in heaven and earth, and to righteous and unrighteous, as in light and darkness, and to holy authors who have been the ministers of the law unto us, as in the firmament which is settled betwixt the waters and the waters, and to the society of people yet in the bitterness of infidelity, as in the sea, and to the zeal of holy souls, as in the dry land, and to works of mercy belonging to this present life, as in the herbs bearing seed, and in trees bearing fruit, and to spiritual gifts set forth for edification, as in the lights of heaven, and to affections formed unto temperance, as in the living soul. In all these instances we meet with multitudes, abundance, and increase, but what shall in such wise increase and multiply that one thing may be expressed many ways, and one expression understood many ways, we find not, except in signs corporeally expressed, and in things mentally conceived. By signs corporeally pronounced we understand the generations of the waters, necessarily occasioned by the depth of the flesh, by things mentally conceived, human generations, on account of the fruitfulness of reason. And for this end do we believe the Lord to have said to these kinds, increase and multiply. For in this blessing, I conceive thee to have granted us a power and a faculty, both to express several ways what we understand but one, and to understand several ways, what we read to be obscurely delivered but in one. Thus are the waters of the sea replenished, which are not moved but by several significations, thus with human increase is the earth also replenished, whose dryness appeareth in its longing, and reason ruleth over it. I would also say, 
O Lord my God, what the following scripture minds me of. Yeah, I will say, and not fear. For I will say the truth, thyself inspiring. Me with what thou willedst me to deliver out of those words. But by no other inspiration than thine, do I believe myself to speak truth, seeing thou art the truth, and every man a liar. He therefore that speak they lie, speak of his own, that therefore I may speak truth, I will speak of thine. Behold, thou hast given unto us for food every herb bearing seed, which is upon all the earth, and every tree, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. And not to us alone, but also to all the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the earth, and to all creeping things, but unto the fishes and to the great whales, hast thou not given them. Now we said, that by these fruits of the earth were signified, and figured in an allegory, the works of mercy which are provided for the necessities of this life out of the fruitful earth. Such an earth was the devout. One Sephorus, unto whose house thou gavest mercy, because he often refreshed thy Paul, and was not ashamed of his chain. Thus did also the brethren, and such fruit did they bear, who out of Macedonia supplied what was lacking to him. But how grieved he for some trees, which did not afford him the fruit due unto him, where he saith, at my first answer no. Man stood by me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. For these fruits are due to such as minister the spiritual doctrine unto us out of their understanding of the divine mysteries, and they are due to them, as men, yea and due to them also, as the living soul, which giveth itself as an example, in all continency, and do unto them also, as flying creatures, for their blessings which are multiplied upon the earth, because their sound went out into all lands. But they are fed by these fruits, that are delighted with them, nor are they delighted with them, whose God is their belly. For neither in them that yield them, are the things yielded the fruit, but with what mind they yield them. He therefore that served God, and not his own belly, I plainly see why he rejoiced, I see it, and I rejoice with him. For he had received from the Philippians, what they had sent by Epaphroditus unto him, and yet I perceive why he rejoiced. For whereat he rejoiced upon that he fed, for speaking in truth, I rejoiced, saith he, greatly in the Lord, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but it had become wearisome unto you. These Philippians then had now dried up, with a long weariness, and withered as it were as to bearing this fruit of a good work, and he rejoiceth for them, that they flourished. Again, not for himself, that they supplied his wants. Therefore subjoins he, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound, everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full, and to be hungry, both to abound, and to suffer need. I can do all things through him which strengtheneth me. Whereat then rejoicest thou, O great Paul? Whereat rejoicest thou? Whereon? Feedest thou, O man, renewed in the knowledge of God, after the image of him that created thee, thou living soul, of so much continency, thou tongue like flying fowls, speaking mysteries. For to such creatures, is this food do what is it that feeds thee? Joy. Hear we what follows. Notwithstanding, ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Herat he rejoiceth, hereon feedeth, because they had well done, not because his strait was eased, who saith unto thee, Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress, 
for that he knew to abound, and to suffer want, in thee who strengthenest him. For ye Philippians also know, saith he, that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Unto these good works, he now rejoiceth that they are returned, and is gladdened that they flourished again, as when a fruitful field resumes its green. Was it for his own necessities, because he said, Ye sent unto my necessity. Rejoiceth he for that? Verily not for that. But how know we this? Because himself says immediately, Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit. I have learned of thee, my God, to distinguish betwixt a gift and fruit. A gift is the thing itself which he gives, that imparts these necessaries unto us, as money, meat, drink, clothing, shelter, help. But the fruit is the good and right will of the giver. For the good. Master said not only, he that receiveth a prophet, but added, in the name of a prophet, nor did he only say, he that receiveth a righteous man, but added, in the name of a righteous man. So verily shall the one receive the reward of a prophet, the other, the reward of a righteous man, nor saith he only, he that shall give to drink a cup of cold water to one of my little ones, but added, in the name of a disciple, and so concludeth. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. The gift is, to receive a prophet, to receive a righteous man, to give a cup of cold water to a disciple, but the fruit, to do this in the name of a prophet, in the name of a righteous man, in the name of a disciple. With fruit was Elijah, fed by the widow that knew she fed a man of God, and therefore fed him. But by the raven was he fed with a gift. Nor was the inner man of Elijah so fed, but the outer only, which might also for want of that food have perished. I will then speak what is true in thy sight, O Lord, that when carnal men and infidels, for the gaining and initiating whom, the initiatory sacraments and the mighty workings of miracles are necessary, which we supposed to be signified by the name of fishes and whales, undertake the bodily refreshment, or otherwise succour thy servant with something useful. For this present life, whereas they be ignorant, why this is to be done. And to what end, neither do they feed these, nor are these fed by them. Because neither do the one do it out of an holy and right intent, nor do the other rejoice at their gifts, whose fruit they as yet behold not. For upon that is the mind fed, of which it is glad. And therefore do not the fishes and whales feed upon such meats, as the earth brings not forth, until after it was separated and divided from the bitterness of the waves of the sea. And thou, O God, sawest everything that thou hadst made, and, behold, it was very good. Yet we also see the same, and behold, all things are very good. Of the several kinds of thy works, when thou hadst said let them be, and they were, thou sawest each that it was good. Seven times have I counted it to be written, that thou sawest that that which thou madest was good, and this is the eighth, that thou sawest everything that thou hadst made, and, behold, it was not only good, but also very good, as being now altogether. For severally, they were only good, but altogether, both good and very good. All beautiful bodies express the same, by reason that a body consisting of members all beautiful, is far more beautiful than the same members by themselves are, by whose well-ordered blending the whole is perfected, notwithstanding that the members severally be also beautiful. 
and I looked narrowly to find, whether seven, or eight times thou sawest. That thy works were good, when they pleased thee, but in thy seeing I found no times, whereby I might understand that thou sawest so often, what thou madest. And I said, Lord, is not this thy scripture true, since thou art true, and being truth, hast set it forth? Why then dost thou say unto me, that in thy seeing there be no times, whereas this thy scripture tells me, that what thou madest each day, thou sawest that it was good. And when I counted them, I found how often unto this thou answerest me. For thou art my God, and with a strong voice telliest thy servant in his inner ear, breaking through my deafness and crying, O man, that which my scripture saith, I say, and yet doth that speak in time, but time has no relation to my word, because my word exists in equal eternity with myself. So the things which ye see through my spirit, I see, like as what ye speak. By my spirit, I speak. And so when ye see those things in time, I see them. Not in time, as when ye speak in time, I speak them not in time. And I heard, O Lord my God, and drank up a drop of sweetness out of thy truth, and understood, that certain men there be who mislike thy works. And say, that many of them thou madest, compelled by necessity, such as the fabric of the heavens, and harmony of the stars, and that thou madest them not of what was thine, but that they were otherwhere and from other sources created, for thee to bring together and compact and combine, when out of thy conquered enemies thou raisedst up the walls of the universe, that they, bound down by the structure, might not again be able to rebel against thee. For other things, they say thou neither madest them, nor even compactedst them, such as all flesh and all very minute creatures, and whatsoever hath its root in the earth, but that a mind at enmity with thee, and another nature not created by thee, and contrary unto thee, did, in these lower stages of the world, beget and frame these things. Frenzied are they who say thus, because they see not thy works by thy spirit, nor recognize thee in them. But they who by thy spirit see these things, thou seest in them. Therefore, when they see that these things are good, thou seest that they are good. And whatsoever things for thy sake please, thou pleasest in them, and what? Through thy spirit please us, they please thee in us. For what man knoweth? The things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no one, but the Spirit of God. Now we, saith he, have received, not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And I am admonished, truly the things of God knoweth no one, but the Spirit of God, how then do we also know, what things are given us of God? Answer. Is made me, because the things which we know by his Spirit, even these know. One know it, but the Spirit of God. For as it is rightly said unto those, that were to speak by the Spirit of God, it is not ye that speak, so is it. Rightly said to them that know through the Spirit of God, it is not ye that know. And no less than is it rightly said to those that see through the Spirit of God, it is not ye that see, so whatsoever through the Spirit of God they see to be good, it is not they, but God that sees that it is good. It is one thing then for a man to think that to be ill which is good, as the forename do, another, that that which is good, a man should see that it is good, as thy creatures be pleasing unto many. Because they be good, whom yet thou pleasest not in them, when they prefer to enjoy them to thee and another, that when a man sees a thing that it is good, God should in him see that it is good, so, namely, that he should be loved in that which he made, who cannot be loved, but by the Holy Ghost, which he hath given. 
because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, by whom we see that whatsoever in any degree is, is good. For from him it is, who himself is not in degree, but what he is, is. Thanks to thee, O Lord. We behold the heaven and earth, whether the corporeal part, superior and inferior, or the spiritual and corporeal creature, and in the adorning of these parts, whereof the universal pile of the world, or rather the universal creation, doth consist, we see light made, and divided from the darkness. We see the firmament of heaven. Whether that primary body of the world, between the spiritual upper waters and the inferior corporeal waters, or, since this also is called heaven, this space of air through which wander the fowls of heaven, betwixt those waters which are in vapours born above them, and in clear nights distill down in dew, and those heavier waters which flow along the earth. We behold a face of waters gathered together in the fields of the sea, and the dry land both void, and formed so as to be visible and harmonized, yet, yeah, and the matter of herbs and trees. We behold the lights shining from above, the sun to suffice for the day, the moon, and the stars to cheer the night, and that by all these, times should be marked and signified. We behold on all sides a moist element, replenished with fishes, beasts, and birds, because the grossness of the air, which bears up the flights of birds, thickneth itself by the exhalation of the waters. We behold the face of the earth decked out with earthly creatures, and man, created after thy image and likeness, even through that thy very image and likeness, that is the power of reason and understanding, set over all irrational creatures. And as in his soul there is one power which has dominion by directing, another made subject, that it might obey, so was. Therefore the man, corporeally also, made a woman, who in the mind of her reasonable understanding should have a parity of nature, but in the sex of her body, should be in like manner subject to the sex of her husband, as the appetite of doing is fain to conceive the skill of right doing from the reason of the mind. These things we behold, and they are severally good, and altogether very good. Let thy works praise thee, that we may love thee, and let us love thee. That thy works may praise thee, which from time have beginning and ending, rising and setting, growth and decay, form and privation. They have then their succession of morning and evening, part secretly, part apparently. For they were made of nothing, by thee, not of thee, not of any matter not thine, or that was before, but of matter concreated, that is, at the same time created by thee, because to its state without form, thou without any interval of time didst give form. For seeing the matter of heaven and earth is one thing, and the form another, thou madest the matter of merely nothing, but the form of the world out of the matter without form, yet both together, so that the form should follow the matter, without any interval of delay. We have also examined what thou willedst to be shadowed forth, whether by the creation, or the relation of things in such an order. And we have seen, that things singly are good, and together very good, in thy word, in thy only begotten, both heaven and earth, the head and the body of the church, in thy predestination before all times, without morning and evening. But when thou beganest to execute in time the things predestinated, to the end thou mightest reveal hidden things, and rectify our disorders, for our sins hung over us, and we had sunk into the dark deep, and thy good spirit was born over us, to help us in due season, and thou didst justify the ungodly, and dividest them from the wicked, and thou madest the firmament of authority of thy book between those placed 
above, who were to be docile unto thee, and those under, who were to be subject to them, and thou gatheredst together the society of unbelievers into one conspiracy, that the zeal of the faithful might appear, and they might bring forth works of mercy, even distributing to the poor their earthly riches, to obtain heavenly. And after this didst thou kindle certain lights in the firmament, thy holy ones, having the word of life, and shining with an eminent authority set on high through spiritual gifts. After that again, for the initiation of the unbelieving Gentiles, didst thou out of corporeal matter produce the sacraments, and visible miracles, and forms of words according to the firmament of thy book, by which the faithful should be blessed and multiplied. Next didst thou form the living soul of the faithful, through affections well ordered by the vigor of continency, and after that, the mind subjected to the alone and needing to imitate no human authority, hast thou renewed after thy image and likeness, and didst subject its rational actions to the excellency of the understanding, as the woman to the man, and to all offices of thy ministry, necessary for the perfecting of the faithful in this life, thou willedst, that for their temporal uses, good things, fruitful to themselves in time to come, be given by the same faithful. All these we see, and they are very good, because thou seest them in us, who hast given unto us thy spirit, by which we might see them, and in them love thee. O Lord God, give peace unto us, for thou hast given us all things the peace of rest, the peace of the Sabbath, which hath no evening. For all this most goodly array of things very good, having finished their courses, is to pass away, for in them there was morning and evening. But the seventh day hath no evening, nor hath it setting, because thou hast sanctified it to an everlasting continuance, that that which thou didst after thy works which were very good, resting the seventh day. Although thou madest them in unbroken rest, that may the voice of thy book announce beforehand unto us, that we also after our works, therefore very good, because thou hast given them us, shall rest in thee also in the Sabbath of eternal life. For then shalt thou rest in us, as now thou workest in us, and so shall that be thy rest through us, as these are thy works through us. But thou, Lord, ever workest, and art ever at rest. Nor dost thou see in time, nor art moved in time, nor restest in a time, and yet thou makest things seen. In time, yet the times themselves, and the rest which results from time. We therefore see these things which thou madest, because they are, but they are, because thou seest them. And we see without, that they are, and within, that they are good, but thou sawest them there, when made, where? Thou sawest them, yet to be made. And we were at a later time moved to do. Well, after our hearts had conceived of thy spirit, but in the former time. We were moved to do evil, forsaking thee, but thou, the one, the good God. Didst never cease doing good. And we also have some good works, of thy. Gift, but not eternal, after them we trust to rest in thy great hallowing. But thou being the good which needeth no good, art ever at rest, because thy rest is thou thyself. And what man can teach man to understand this? Or what angel, an angel? Or what angel, a man? Let it be asked of thee. Sought in thee, knocked for at thee, so, so shall it be received, so shall it be found, so shall it be opened. Amen. Gracious T.I.B.I. Domini. End of the Project Gutenberg ebook The Confessions of S.T. Augustine. Updated editions will replace the previous one. The old editions will be renamed. Creating the works from print editions not protected by U.S. copyright. Law means that no one owns a United States copyright in these works. So the Foundation, and you, 
can copy and distribute it in the United States without permission and without paying copyright royalties. Special rules, set forth in the general terms of use part of this license, apply to copying and distributing project. Gutenberg Trademark Electronic Works to protect the Project Gutenberg Trademark. Concept and Trademark. Project Gutenberg is a registered trademark and may not be used if you charge for an ebook, except by following the terms of the trademark license, including paying royalties for use of the Project Gutenberg trademark. If you do not charge anything for copies of this ebook, complying with the trademark license is very easy. You may use this ebook for nearly any purpose such as creation of derivative works, reports, performances, and research. Project Gutenberg ebooks may be modified and printed and given away. You may do practically anything in the United States with ebooks not protected by U.S. copyright law. Redistribution is subject to the trademark license, especially commercial redistribution. Start, full license. The full Project Gutenberg license. Please read this before you distribute or use this work. To protect the Project Gutenberg trademark mission of promoting the free distribution of electronic works, by using or distributing this work, or any other work associated in any way with the phrase Project Gutenberg, you agree to comply with all the terms of the full Project Gutenberg trademark license available with this file or online at www.gutenberg.org slash license. Section 1. General Terms of Use and Redistributing Project Gutenberg Trademark Electronic Works 1.a. By reading or using any part of this Project Gutenberg Trademark Electronic Work, you indicate that you have read, understand, agree to, and accept all the terms of this license and intellectual property. Trademark slash copyright, agreement. If you do not agree to abide by all the terms of this agreement, you must cease using and return or destroy all copies of Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works in your possession. If you paid a fee for obtaining a copy of or access to a Project Gutenberg trademark electronic work and you do not agree to be bound by the terms of this agreement, you may obtain a refund from the person or entity to whom you paid the fee as set forth in paragraph 1.e.8. 1.b Project Gutenberg is a registered trademark. It may only be used on or associated in any way with an electronic work by people who agree to be bound by the terms of this agreement. There are a few things that you can do with most Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works even without complying with the full terms of this agreement. C. Paragraph 1.C below. There are a lot of things you can do with Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works if you follow the terms of this agreement and help preserve free future access to Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works. See Paragraph 1.E below. 1.C. The Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation, the Foundation or PGLOF, owns a compilation copyright in the collection of Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works. Nearly all the individual works in the collection are in the public domain in the United States. If an individual work is unprotected by copyright law in the United States and you are located in the United States, we do not claim a right to prevent you from copying, distributing, performing, displaying or creating derivative works based on the work as long as all references to Project Gutenberg are removed. Of course, we hope that you will support the Project Gutenberg trademark mission of promoting free access to electronic works by freely sharing Project Gutenberg trademark works in compliance with the terms of this agreement for keeping the Project Gutenberg trademark name associated with the work. You can easily comply with the terms of this agreement by keeping this work in the 
same format with its attached full Project Gutenberg trademark license when you share it without charge with others. 1.d. The copyright laws of the place where you are located also govern what you can do with this work. Copyright laws in most countries are in a constant state of change. If you are outside the United States, check the laws of your country in addition to the terms of this agreement before downloading, copying, displaying, performing, distributing or creating derivative works based on this work or any other Project Gutenberg trademark work. The Foundation makes no representations concerning the copyright status of any work in any country other than the United States. 1.e Unless you have removed all references to Project Gutenberg. 1.e.1 The following sentence, with active links to, or other immediate access to, the full Project Gutenberg trademark license must appear prominently whenever any copy of a Project Gutenberg trademark work, any work on which the phrase Project Gutenberg appears, or with which the phrase Project Gutenberg is associated, is accessed, displayed, performed, viewed, copied, or distributed. This ebook is for the use of anyone anywhere in the United States and most other parts of the world at no cost and with almost no restrictions whatsoever. You may copy it, give it away or reuse it under the terms of the Project Gutenberg license included with this ebook or online at www.gutenberg.org. If you are not located in the United States, you will have to check the laws of the country where you are located before using this ebook. 1.e.2 if an individual Project Gutenberg trademark electronic work is derived from texts not protected by U.S. copyright law, does not contain a notice indicating that it is posted with permission of the copyright holder, the work can be copied and distributed to anyone in the United States without paying any fees or charges. If you are redistributing or providing access to a work with the phrase Project Gutenberg associated with or appearing on the work, you must comply either with the requirements of paragraphs 1.e.1 through 1.e.7 or obtain permission for the use of the work and the Project Gutenberg trademark. Trademark as set forth in paragraphs 1.e.8 or 1.e.9. 1.e.3 If an individual Project Gutenberg trademark electronic work is posted, with the permission of the copyright holder, your use and distribution must comply with both paragraphs 1.e.1 through 1.e.7 and any additional terms imposed by the copyright holder. Additional terms will be linked to the Project Gutenberg trademark license for all works posted with the permission of the copyright holder found at the beginning of this work. 1.e.4 do not unlink or detach or remove the full Project Gutenberg trademark license terms from this work, or any files containing a part of this work or any other work associated with Project Gutenberg trademark. 1.e.5 Do not copy, display, perform, distribute or redistribute this electronic work, or any part of this electronic work, without prominently displaying the sentence set forth in paragraph 1.e.1 with active links or immediate access to the full terms of the project. Gutenberg trademark license. 1.e.6. You may convert to and distribute this work in any binary. Compressed, marked up, non-proprietary or proprietary form, including any word processing or hypertext form. However, if you provide access to or distribute copies of a Project Gutenberg trademark work in a format other than plain vanilla ASCII or other format used in the official version posted on the official Project Gutenberg trademark website www.gutenberg.org, you must, at no additional cost, fee, or expense to the user, provide a copy, a means of exporting a copy, or a means 
of obtaining a copy upon request, of the work in its original plane. Vanilla ASCII or other form. Any alternate format must include the full project Gutenberg trademark license as specified in paragraph 1.e.1. 1.e.7. Do not charge a fee for access to, viewing, displaying performing, copying, or distributing any Project Gutenberg trademark works. Unless you comply with paragraph 1.e.8 or 1.e.9. 1.e.8. You may charge a reasonable fee for copies of or providing access to or distributing Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works. Provided that you pay a royalty fee of 20% of the gross profits you derive from the use of Project Gutenberg trademark works calculated using the method you already used to calculate your applicable taxes. The fee is owed to the owner of the Project Gutenberg trademark trademark, but he has agreed to donate royalties under this paragraph to the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation. Royalty payments must be paid within 60 days following each date on which you prepare, or are legally required to prepare, your periodic tax returns. Royalty. Payments should be clearly marked as such and sent to the project. Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation at the address specified in. Section 4, Information about donations to the project Gutenberg. Literary Archive Foundation. You provide a full refund of any money paid by a user who notifies. You in writing, or by email within 30 days of receipt that s slash he does not agree to the terms of the full project Gutenberg trademark license. You must require such a user to return or destroy all copies of the works possessed in a physical medium and discontinue all use of and all access to other copies of project Gutenberg trademark works. You provide, in accordance with paragraph 1.f.3, a full refund of any money paid for a work or a replacement copy, if a defect in the electronic work is discovered and reported to you within 90 days of receipt of the work, you comply with all other terms of this agreement for free distribution of Project Gutenberg trademark works. 1.e.9 If you wish to charge a fee or distribute a project, Gutenberg trademark electronic work or group of works on different terms then are set forth in this agreement, you must obtain permission in writing. From the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation, the manager of the Project Gutenberg Trademark Trademark. Contact the foundation as set. Fourth in Section 3 below. 1.f. 1.f.1. Project Gutenberg volunteers and employees expend considerable effort to identify do copyright research on, transcribe and proofread. Works not protected by U.S. copyright law in creating the project. Gutenberg Trademark Collection. Despite these efforts, Project Gutenberg Trademark. Electronic works, and the medium on which they may be stored, may. Contain defects, such as, but not limited to, incomplete, inaccurate or corrupt data, transcription errors, a copyright, or other intellectual property infringement, a defective or damaged disk or other medium, a computer virus, or computer codes that damage or cannot be read by your equipment. 1.f.2 Limited warranty, disclaimer of damages, except for the right of replacement or refund described in paragraph 1.f.3, the project. Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation, the owner of the project. Gutenberg Trademark Trademark, and any other party distributing a project. Gutenberg Trademark Electronic Work under this agreement, disclaim all liability to you for damages, costs, and expenses, including legal fees. You agree that you have no remedies for negligence, strict liability, breach of warranty or breach of contract except those provided in paragraph 1.f.3. You agree that the foundation, the 
trademark owner, and any distributor under this agreement will not be liable to you for actual, direct, indirect, consequential, punitive or incidental damages even if you give notice of the possibility of such damage. 1.F.3 Limited right of replacement or refund, if you discover a defect in this electronic work within 90 days of receiving it, you can receive a refund of the money, if any, you paid for it by sending a written explanation to the person you received the work from. If you received the work on a physical medium, you must return the medium with your written explanation. The person or entity that provided you with the defective work may elect to provide a replacement copy in lieu of a refund. If you receive the work electronically, the person or entity providing it to you may choose to give you a second opportunity to receive the work electronically in lieu of a refund. If the second copy is also defective, you may demand a refund in writing without further opportunities to fix the problem. 1.F.4 Except for the limited right of replacement or refund set forth. In paragraph 1.F.3, this work is provided to you as is, with no other warranties of any kind, express or implied, including but not limited to warranties of merchantability or fitness for any purpose. 1.F.5 Some states do not allow disclaimers of certain implied warranties or the exclusion or limitation of certain types of damages. If any disclaimer or limitation set forth in this agreement violates the law of the state applicable to this agreement, the agreement shall be interpreted to make the maximum disclaimer or limitation permitted by the applicable state law. The invalidity or unenforceability of any provision of this agreement shall not void the remaining provisions. 1.F.6 Indemnity, you agree to indemnify and hold the foundation, the trademark owner, any agent, or employee of the foundation, anyone providing copies of Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works in accordance with this agreement, and any volunteers associated with the production, promotion, and distribution of Project Gutenberg trademark electronic works, harmless from all liability, costs, and expenses, including legal fees, that arise directly or indirectly from any of the following which you do or cause to occur, a distribution of this or any Project Gutenberg trademark work, b alteration, modification, or additions or deletions to any Project Gutenberg trademark work, and c any defect you cause. Section 2. Information about the mission of Project Gutenberg trademark. Project Gutenberg trademark is synonymous with the free distribution of electronic works in formats readable by the widest variety of computers including obsolete, old, middle-aged, and new computers. It exists because of the efforts of hundreds of volunteers and donations from people in all walks of life. Volunteers and financial support to provide volunteers with the assistance they need are critical to reaching Project Gutenberg trademark S. Goals and ensuring that the Project Gutenberg trademark collection will remain freely available for generations to come. In 2001, the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation was created to provide a secure and permanent future for Project Gutenberg trademark and future generations. To learn more about the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation and how your efforts and donations can help, see Sections 3 and 4 and the Foundation Information page at www.gutenberg.org. Section 3. Information about the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation. The Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation is a non-profit. 501, c. 3, educational corporation organized under the laws of the State of Mississippi and granted tax-exempt status by the internal. Revenue Service. 
the foundation's INE or federal tax identification. Number is 64-6221541. Contributions to the Project Gutenberg Literary Archive Foundation are tax deductible to the full extent permitted by U.S. federal laws and your state's laws. The Foundation's business office is located at 809 North 1500 West. Salt Lake City, Utah, 84116801-596-1887. Email contact links and up. To date contact information can be found at the Foundation's website and official page at www.gutenberg.org slash contact. Section 4. Information about donations to the Project Gutenberg. Literary Archive Foundation. Project Gutenberg trademark depends upon and cannot survive without widespread public support and donations to carry out its mission of increasing the number of public domain and licensed works that can be freely distributed in machine-readable form accessible by the widest array of equipment including outdated equipment. Many small donations, $1 to $5,000, are particularly important to maintaining tax-exempt status with the IRS. The Foundation is committed to complying with the laws regulating charities and charitable donations in all 50 states of the United States. Compliance requirements are not uniform and it takes a considerable effort, much paperwork, and many fees to meet and keep up with the requirements.